Let's do another optimization problem. This is similar to one on the slides. Uh, we have the unit circle, which has equation x squared plus y squared equals 1, and we have some point, minus 2, 1, that's not on the circle. And I want to know what, in the slides, I wanted to know what the closest point on the circle was to this point, but now I want to know the farthest point. So let's see how that goes. Well, the thing I'm trying to maximize is the distance. So I should definitely have an equation for the distance from my fixed point to the f any point on the, on the circle. So any point on the circle, and let's try and eyeball where the farthest point might be that has coordinates x and y. So I know that the distance function tells me that the distance squared from x, y to minus 2, 1 is x minus minus 2, which is plus 2 squared, plus y minus 1 squared. You can get this from Pythagoras if you have a hard time remembering it. We drop down a vertical and a horizontal line, and the distance is going to be the hypotenuse of the right triangle that we've made. The vertical edge of the triangle is the difference in y values, and the horizontal edge is the difference in x values. One way to simplify the calculations is to notice that by minimizing the distance squared, we're minimizing the distance. So it's nice to think of this distance squared as its own function as opposed to taking the square root because if we take the square root then there's just more chain rule and you can do it that way but it's a little more pleasant to not. So the function we want to minimize is this distance squared here but there's two problems. One is that there's two variables. Don't know how to take the minimum if there's two variables or the maximum in this case. The other problem is that we haven't we haven't built into this function that x and y have to be on the circle. This is just any generic x and y. Right now there's nothing stopping me from saying x is minus 2, y is 1, and my distance is 0. So now we need to build in the fact that x and y are on the circle. And the slightly tricky thing is that we don't have a function for y. We know that y squared is 1 minus x squared. I get this by just solving my equation for y squared, but that means that y, at any given x, there's going to be a y value at both the positive and the negative square root of 1 minus x squared, and that's not a function. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to use a little interpretation here. Notice if here's my point, minus 2, 1, I want the furthest point away from it, it's going to be on the bottom half of this circle. It's going to be on the bottom semicircle. It's not going to be on the top half. So I can assume that my y is going to be negative. So instead of thinking about finding the maximum distance from this point to this entire circle, I can think about finding the maximum distance from this point to this semicircle on the bottom, which has this equation. And it's going to be the same problem. So I'm going to substitute in y is the minus square root of 1 minus x squared. This is going to tell me that I'm on this green semicircle, and it's also going to get me down to one variable. So now I have a function in one variable, and I just want to minimize it. Uh, I want to minimize it over a range that makes sense, which is x can be from minus 1 to 1, because those are the x values that we actually find in our circle. In order to make my differentiation a little bit easier, I'm going to expand these out. Now that they're expanded, I can simplify a little. These x squareds cancel, and this is probably about as simple as I can get it before I differentiate. So now I'm going to differentiate with respect to x. The goal is to find the maximum value this function achieves when x is between minus 1 and 1. Now I have the derivative, I want to find where it's 0, or where it doesn't exist. I notice that plot plus and minus 1 are going to be singular points. I would have probably had to check these anyways because they're my endpoints. In order to find my critical points, I'm going to set this equal to 0 and solve for x. So at this point, probably the easiest thing to do is to square both sides. But you have to be a little careful that sometimes you can get some false answers when you do this. If I square both sides, 
I get this, which simplifies to this. And that tells me that x should be the positive or negative square root of 1 half. But let's double check these. What I want is a critical point. What I want is for the derivative to be equal to 0. And the point where I squared things, I might have given myself some false answers. So here I notice that if x is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared, x can't be minus the square root of a half. Because then, these would both of these sides would have to be negative, and the square root isn't going to pop you out a negative. So actually, the only critical point we get this way is x is the square root of a half. And you can double check if you want that the square root of 1 minus the square root of a half squared, which is a half, is the same as the square root of 1 half. Checks out. So I have a function. I want to find the biggest it gets over some interval. It's enough to check the endpoints, the critical points, and the singular points. Now if we want to be a little clever, it's pretty clear that the maximum distance isn't going to happen when x is minus 1. Certainly there are points that are further away than that. So we can maybe just be a little efficient slash lazy and only consider x is equal to positive 1 and x is equal to the square root of 1 half. So maybe I'm going to use this simplified version of the distance formula. When x is 1, my distance squared is 4 times 1 plus 5 plus 2 times the square root of 1 minus 1, which is 9. And when x is the square root of a half, my distance squared is 4 times the square root of a half plus 5 plus 2 times the square root of 1 minus 1 half. So this is the square root of 1 half, so I get 6 times the square root of 1 half plus 5. So the question is, which one is bigger? Now I can suspect that the actual maximum is occurring at the square root of a half. And the reason is, if I think about the distances, they start small, and then they grow, right? And they seem to get bigger and bigger for a while. And I can guess that this guy here is actually not the maximum. So I can be pretty certain that uh, the maximum occurs not at the endpoints, which would mean it has to occur at the square root of 1 half. But just to be sure, let's prove that 6 times the square root of 1 half plus 5 is greater than 9. Well, this happens if and only if 6 times the square root of 1 half is greater than 4. And this is the same as saying the square root of 1 half is greater than 4 over 6, which is 2 over 3. And since these are positive numbers, this is the same as saying a half is greater than this bit squared. And in fact, that's true. Uh, the actual difference actually isn't that great. So the distance from my point to 1 is 9, and the distance from my point to x equals 1 half is 6 times the square root of a half plus 5, which is about 9.24. We have to add that 5. So we're just a little bit further away at that point than we are at the end point. So the furthest point from the circle is going to be when x is the square root of 1 half which is going to mean that y is the negative square root of 1 minus a half, which is the negative square root of a half.